Gospel of April the 21st, 2014, a reading from the Holy Gospel according to Matthew. Mary Magdalene and the other Mary went away quickly from the tomb, fearful yet overjoyed, and ran to announce the news to his disciples. And behold, Jesus met them on their way and greeted them. They approached, embraced his feet, and did him homage. Then Jesus said to them, Do not be afraid. Go tell my brothers to go to Galilee, and there they will see me. While they were going, some of the guard went into the city and told the chief priests all that had happened. And the chief priests assembled with the elders and took counsel. Then they gave a large sum of money to the soldiers, telling them, You are to say, His disciples came by night and stole him while we were asleep. And if this gets to the ears of the governors, we will satisfy him and keep you out of trouble. The soldiers took the money and did as they were instructed. And this story was, has circulated among the Jews to the present day. Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, Lord Jesus Christ. Happy Easter to all of you. God bless our Lord Jesus Christ who has risen from the death. He is alive. His tomb is empty. We have like two segments in today's Gospel. The first, of course, is the scene where both Marys, the lovers of God, and I mean lovers not in the sense of loving a man and a woman, but rather adoring God, a friend, a very dear friend, a very dear friend who happens to be God. They came early in the morning of Sunday and they saw the tomb that was empty and they saw two angels there who told them why are you looking here among the dead he who lives the one that you're looking for the crucified Jesus has risen God tells his disciples and they're going away they believe the angels they're happy and while they're being obedient they receive the biggest joy they are greeted by Jesus himself, resurrected. And perhaps they approach him somewhat fearfully, but nevertheless they embrace their feet and did him homage. And then the Lord tells them, not, do not be afraid. Go tell my brothers to go to Galilee. They will see me there. This is the first part. The lovers, the heart that loves, the heart that seeks, will always find, especially God. And then we see the opposite, the powerful, the ones with the money, the ones with the control of political issues. The guards that had been contracted in the first hand by the high priests, once they see what had happened, because they saw the angel that came down and caused the big tremor, the earth tremor, and they saw their face and they were so afraid that they fainted, they passed out. And afterwards they, find, they found out that the tomb was empty. So they reported all that. But it was against the interest of the chief priest and the elders. So all of them collected money and put it into the soldiers' hands. So they bribed them. You are to say his disciples came by night and stole him while we were asleep. Of course there was going to have a big reprimand and perhaps even incarceration by the governor because they had failed the orders. But since the chief priests were bribing, they already told the guys, we will take care of the governor and we will satisfy him, meaning we will bribe him too, so and get you out of trouble. And that is the version that circulated among the Jews. A lie. And why? This same lie still happens all over the world. Because it is against the interest of the devil, of Satan, and of those that work for him, that the gospel is known, lest we become really brothers. Just imagine that. If there was charity, if there were true charity all among us, there, were, there would be no hunger. There would be no need for immigration. There would be no poors. 
in the sense of not having anything. Not, I'm not talking about becoming all communists. That's a stupid thing to say. That's just an utopic point of view. Communism does not lead anywhere and is not at any rate what God wants to establish. He wants to establish a brotherhood that each of us having its own gifts, its own abilities, his own abilities, would cooperate and love each other that we might be able to help those in dire need if there would be no widows left alone, if there would be no orphans in need of food and housing, if there would be no homeless people, then what would the government would do? If we would all contribute for the satisfaction of the hunger of, place, of places like Sudan, and we wouldn't be fighting for the oil in Iran or Iraq, then what? Then governments would lose a lot of power. And there are some within the power structure that would rather make money convincing us that they are giving the poor what they need. And in reality they don't, because most of that money goes into their pockets somehow. So we are in a fight against them, all of us that work with the gospel and with God. Sadly, but truly. It is not that we have to uh, do a fight or a war against them, because we are told also by Jesus himself, the one who uses the spade will die by spade. He wants us to be humble, but to give out our heart in loving each other. Why does the Lord says, tell my brothers to go to Galilee, the Galilee of the pagans, of those that seemingly are far away from the temple, that might seem to be far away from God, the Galilee of the marginalized, of those rejected by the people in power, by the well-off, in those places where there is great need. And it's, it's, it doesn't have to be half the world around in Africa or Asia. It could happen in your own neighborhood, or if not in your neighborhood, even in your own city, in the places of misery and poorness. That's where you have to go, to find Jesus. Because we have to pass from that first encounter from within to the fruits of Easter, to love, to sharing the life eternal that we have been granted with all of us that have need. And that has to happen through love. May our Father in heaven grant us to live like that every day. God bless you, brothers.